I just got a notice that we've gone live. Oh, all right. I hear music. I see a logo. Live in eight minutes. Eight minutes. Should have done like eight minutes ago. Holy smokes. Is it is it working? Can can people hear me? It seems to Sean, be. can you hear me? I wanted to play our little lead in graphic because I, I really did something amazing, I think, with the uh, with the turkey that um, that attacks <laughs> that it's eating like a person. Uh, I gotta because, say that's like the crispest handprint I have ever seen. Right, <laughs> crisp. mm -hmm. I've I've definitely improved. Um, uh, Sean says we can hear and see. Hello, everybody. We are streaming. All right, we are hey. legit streaming. We've got talk boxes up. Sweet. Look, everybody is sort of looking semi-centered, but it's mutants and masterminds Monday, and we come to you every Monday talking about mutants and masterminds with Crystal Frazier. Hi. And Steve Kenson, and hey, I, buddy. and I, your disembodied Troy, and um, today we're talking about a lot of good stuff. I think we got some. I don't. We've got the holidays coming up, and some mm -hmm. advice for people who are looking to run games, and some, you know, and some general thoughts on the holiday, you know, and our favorite kind of ways to spend it or survive it if that is the case for you um but um oh alex good to see you um absolutely so glad to have you um if anybody has questions feel free to drop them in the uh chat and uh we'll we'll see about getting an answer or making one up for you yeah so i guess the i guess the hot question this week is what is the best thanksgiving food uh, and i mm. think we can all agree it's cranberry sauce <laughs> I'm a big fan. Yeah, yeah. I I kind of feel I kind of feel that. Um, you know, I'm also feeling mm -hmm. you know a, a good stuffing. Mm, I'm a big stuffing fan. Yeah, my wife is over here saying it's gravy. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm gonna have to go with your wife on that one, mm -hmm. but <laughs> only by a hair because you know gravy's kind of an anytime food. It's like breakfast cereal, right. breakfast cereal, or kind of like okay, you know. Fill you're your having tub a rough up. night, you just pour yourself a tall cup of gravy. Gravy, <laughs> yeah. mm. Mm. Everything looks better after that. Absolutely, especially if you coat your body <laughs> in a thin sheen of gravy. What kind of gravy is your favorite? Uh, I love turkey giblet gravy. Oh. Mm -hmm. My wife makes a gravy using some of the giblets and the neck and chopped onions and peppers and sage. and It is amazing. Uh, nice. it's, it's not pronounced giblet. No. No? Hmm. No. Okay. Um, Sean Vieira says, sourdough stuffing with bacon, please. And Alex mm. says, cranberry sauce is the bomb. Yeah. I'm more of a sausage stuffing guy myself. <clears throat> but... No, bread stuffing. Sage bread stuffing. Well, yes, obviously bread, but with sausage. Mm-hmm. Yummy. Mm -hmm. Overkill, you say. No, You're taking no the attention thing. away from the bread, man. No such thing. So we were having a conversation about this, and I believe it was on Will's Day, wherein I learned some disturbing <laughs> things about pizza, and we won't discuss it here because it's just offensive. But we also learned that, Crystal, are you a fan of oysters in your stuffing? Uh, I'm not a fan of oysters in my stuffing. I am a fan of oysters. There is a baked oyster dish that is very mm. traditional in the Northeast, and my grandmother made it, and it was amazing, mm -hmm. and she passed without passing along her recipe. Oh, mm. that is a rough one, yeah. That's a I, pity. Yeah, my family's I mean, big on seafood and oysters as well, and baked, mm -hmm. yeah, but they put it in the stuffing. <laughs> we just kind of grow I'd be willing to try that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, uh, I'm just kind of getting a stomachache thinking about it. Um, hey, Steve, <laughs> Steve, what is what is your? Do you, do you have like a family dish that you uh, that you enjoy? Sort of the the thing that's been passed down, you know, from that reminds you of childhood. Oh gosh, my mom cooks so much, um, so many different things. It's it's hard to to pin it down. She's an amazing cook, um, so it's it's really it's tough. Um, her sort of signature thing lately has been um, turkey pot pie, oh. um, which she started making for for um, church like um, uh, fundraisers. Man, why and did churches the, get all the luck? <laughs> right. And it got to the point where she was literally making like four dozen of them a year <laughs> oh. uh, because people would be like pre-ordering them for for the, the church bake sales. Oh. Yeah, I would like to pre-order one um, just for my every day. Can, can I get a pot pie a day kind of subscription? <laughs> right. Oh, I love pot pies. <clears throat> um, hey, I don't want to stress anybody out, but in our chat – Alice Peng, Ooh. the Hi, famous. Alice. Hi. Hey, Alice. Good to see you. Um, uh, Alice, also, uh, if you wouldn't mind dropping uh, a link, I want to know. I haven't checked on it because things have been chaotic, but I want to know about how your Patreon's doing. I know that Alice is working on uh, their own, uh, uh, you know, world uh, setting, and so it'd be interesting to mm -hmm. see how that's going. And, and of course, we love to help our friends and family gain a little exposure. Uh, Jason uh, Child says turkey pot pie sounds awesome right now. The com the comment that worries me the most, Alex Thomas says, my dad traumatized me for gravy, forever. Oh, oh no. Yeah, do we want to unpack that? Maybe Alex, you can elaborate. I mean, maybe. I mean, I don't want to. Like that's a story we save for the next time we have Alex on the show. Right. Oh yes. Take Remember notes. the traumatic because, gravy story. Yeah, we're gonna need to see the <laughs> hollow, soulful eyes. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Alex and the gravy grievance. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a date. It's a date. All right, Alex, you keep that under wraps, and we'll get back to you. Um, and then we'll have you on, and then we can talk about your your gravy grievance. Um, yeah, we, and we need to have him on to talk up Titan City Chronicles, anyway. Heck yeah, we do. Absolutely, we do. Um, uh, let's see. Sean Vieira says, uh, "Do turkey throughout the year, as my wife is allergic to chicken." Um, yeah, hmm, interesting. I like to eat a chicken. I don't like to see a chicken or hear. It. Or hear one, or have one close to me. Yeah, my wife, my wife goes all out on the turkey, mm -hmm. and it's a whole three-day process. So oh. it's mm -hmm. it's not something we can do often. Is it so? It's like a brining and a with the brining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it starts with a brining process, and she defrosts it slowly to minimize the damage. And uh, like the baking process itself is a whole day of work. Yeah, no joke. I mean, I just get I, – I did order all of my Thanksgiving things early this time instead of waiting mm -hmm. until the day of. Uh, you get some mighty funky-looking turkeys um, if you could wait too late. Um, Alex – oh, how about this? Alex says, I'm off next Monday if you want to hear uh, the tale of the gravy grievance. Well, there we are. All right. All right. Well, sounds good. We don't have to last minute scramble to figure out a topic for next Monday. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. We're always prepared well ahead of time. I mean, you know, relatively speaking, right? A couple minutes before we go, that's that's relatively. Yeah, define well ahead of time. I feel like if it's more than an hour, then we're good. Well, mm -hmm. I'm, I meant to say more like well ahead of time. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, you know, today is also a very important holiday, uh, one that we have celebrated for some time now. Uh, it's called Wolfenut. Am it's I Wolfenut? It is Wolfenut. And do either one of you want to describe or just sort of share what Wolfenut's all about? Uh, all yours. Well, Wolfenut was a holiday that was invented by a uh, boy in New Zealand. Um, that is in honor of all good dogs everywhere and all of the people who are kind to dogs. That's and right. When... Because New Zealand has no large indigenous canines. Mm -hmm, probably. And it's, it's where the, the spirit of the wolf, you know, brings kindness and gifts to all the people who are kind to dogs over the course of the year. 
Wow, you know, a great book to reflect the kindness of wolves, Blue Rose, and the Blue Rose Adventurer's Guide. Which yes, indeed. brings all the adventures of Blue Rose to your 5e campaign. Wow. Must be why, in fact, this very day, we are starting a sale on <gasps> Blue Rose. You're kidding me. Tell me more. <laughs> Fast, Steve, that's amazing. Well, Blue Rose is the most wolf-friendly RPG on the market today. You can mm -hmm. play a psychic oh. wolf who knows magic, or a psychic wolf who protects your friends, or a psychic wolf who steals. Right? Finally. Not because they need to, but because they like to. Finally, a tabletop roleplay game for the wolves. Mm-hmm. It is, uh, what, is it available now? Yeah, I, uh, and yeah, actually, yeah, Blue Rose has Blue Blue been available, available for like four years. Oh, yeah, yes. absolutely. <laughs> now, I also heard tell that we will have a freebie to give away. Are I correct? Well, we, have, uh, we have the adventure, uh, the Wolf and Moot Web, <gasps> uh, which is specifically about the uh, Aldean celebration of uh, Wolf and Moot, um, which is like Wolf and Moot, <laughs> uh, but happens on a different plane of existence. And it's uh, called Wolf and Moot? Well, you, can, Moot. you can blame Joe Carriker for naming it something different. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <laughs> um, Jason we should have Joe on. Oh yeah, we should uh, definitely. We we did. Joe was feeling just a little under the weather. Um, mm -hmm. Sends his best and says, "Ow!" Uh, as he as you do on Wolf of Moot Day. I think you also we have to eat some red meat um, and uh, and then give gifts. Well, you, you make a roast and you leave some of the roast out for the spirit of the wolf. I usually end up attracting the spirit of the rat, but um, <laughs> but I feel yeah, I feel yeah. Can I? Can I leave some tofu out for the spirit of the wolf? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they may. I, the well, I hear oh, it. Never mind. Appar particular. Apparently, the spirit of the wolf is complaining right now. I was gonna say that that wolf is like, <laughs> is like tofu. What? And then what? yelling at you. All right, uh, all right. And I'll leave out jackfruit. <laughs> Yum. Uh, it's supposed to be about being kind to dogs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Jason asks a good question though. Can wolves roll dice without thumbs? The telekinetic uh, ones can. Yeah, I was going to say, the ones with psychic powers, absolutely. That is literally what Sean Duggan said. It's like we all share the same brain. I love it. I love it. <laughs> uh, link. Or the wolves with flesh shaping can give themselves thumbs. Mm -hmm. Flesh shaping has a bad mouth feel. <laughs> well, luckily with flesh, flesh shaping, you can, can improve. Fix that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this. Um, yeah, so Wolf and Newt, um, uh, a a favorite holiday, we will be sharing um, uh, the secret code for you to get your um, your discount in the Green Ronin store. And Joyous Wolf and Newt. Indeed. We will do that in just a second. Um, but we are also talking about some other things, yeah? Apparently there is a human holiday right now called uh, Giving of Thanks. Mm-hmm. Ah, oh, yes, the thanks carving. Indeed, which Americans celebrate tragically late in the year. Right. October, it's like right. civilized people. Yeah. Yeah. Like, for some reason, Americans celebrate it really late. Like, late enough that nobody's thankful for anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's right. That's right. I am actually, this year, I feel particularly, genuinely, authentically thankful for, for a lot of things. Um, just given the way that this year has gone, um, mm -hmm. it's pretty easy to kind of get mired in some in some stuff. But I am um, I'm thankful for this for our mutants and masterminds Monday, and I'm thankful for the opportunity to interact with our um, you know our, our community of fans and uh, you know just the whole Green Run crew. Uh, I just look back on what the year has been, and I'm just like, wow, I'm so lucky to have had I'm the opportunity glad to... we're all here at all yeah right right yeah. we're I... getting we're getting to the finish line i think most of us have lost somebody this year yeah yeah yes absolutely and uh yeah and and you know with covid ramping up covid19 ramping up and and uh the holidays coming and 
knowing that there are a lot of people who are struggling just to be able to, you know, knowing that they're doing the right thing by staying home and having Zoom style, you know, family events and things, not the same, but sure better than having to extend this uh, quarantine for another year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm probably going to end up bringing my monitor and my webcam and my microphone upstairs so we can just stream with my family for a while. Yeah, that's what we're doing, too. I'm having my cousin do a, a cooking show on how to make cookies for, and the family's <laughs> getting all the ingredients Aww. for doing that. Playing some, uh, uh, playing some good uh, digital games, and um, I, I'm, try I'm pushing to do some uh, Mutants and Masterminds, and people are like, huh, hmm. And my mom, my mom's like, of course, she just was just like, absolutely, I'd love to. And I'm like, oh, you you're and very me. lucky. My parents still don't understand what I do for a living, and oh, I can't get them to try it. Yeah, she has neither. Yeah, she has no idea, but she's willing to. I'll say in air quotes, but <laughs> since I'm disembodied, you can't really see them. And but you know, uh, playing, you know, she doesn't quite get it, <laughs> but she tries real hard. Um, let's mm -hmm. see here. We've got some good questions coming uh, about product. And um, Anson asks, can you share any info on the next Astonishing Adventures? As a matter of fact, we can. Yes. We we're going to bring that up in a little bit. Uh, we can wait, or you want to go now? Or uh, Let's go ahead and wait. We're kind of on the, the Thanksgiving topic, but we will we'll put a pin in that. All right, mm -hmm. Anson. See, you got to stick around God, for the I good stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, my family is – Thanksgiving's kind of – emotionally loaded because you know it used to be a big thing we did with my grandparents who have passed now and mm -hmm. i mean when you're when you're queer big family events like this sometimes come with a lot of extra emotional baggage mm -hmm. that can be difficult to deal with uh i mean if you're native american this time of year probably hurts a lot more than most uh because native american history month absolutely gets kind of overlooked entirely in favor of mm -hmm. turkey day so, also, yeah. happy, happy Native American History Month. Indeed. Thank you for saying that as we broadcast um, sitting atop um, <laughs> lands that uh, did not belong to us and uh, were taken from others. And that is uh, something that we're just acknowledging, but yeah, that's important. <laughs> oh, the valley I live in was named after the people we stole it from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. But um, as we work to sort of broaden our, uh, our horizons and to examine our own sort of biases, we work harder to uh, be inclusive and to recognize that uh, things, bad things happened and better things can come if we just do the yeah. work. Mm -hmm. We're not necessarily responsible for the things our ancestors did, but we are responsible for modern decisions that descend from them. So, yes. you know, support your local tribes. Learn whose land you're on and, mm -hmm. and do what you can to uh, try and help those people get, you know, whatever justice or assistance they need. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, here I uh, contribute to a uh, Real Rent Duwamish, which uh, a monthly payment to uh, a fund that goes directly to uh, indigenous peoples in, uh, in our area. So it's, uh, mm -hmm. those are the kinds of things to look for. Chat will be happy for the pretty amazing uh, sale link that I just dropped in there. Check that out, and right. uh, that's the Wolf and Newt sale. And um, I, I, uh, we have uh, Caribou created some pretty phenomenal artwork, uh, but you'll have to go check that out. It's the Caribou's graphics are great. Always yeah. great. Always, always great. Um, yeah, so um, I'm trying to think of the of uh, other Thanksgiving topics. Um, we kind of covered. Uh, well, we were we were well, going to talk a little bit about setting up like holiday games or family games, mm -hmm. and yeah, like, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously, the like quick start style adventures with a basic handbook is the best way to just jump your family into playing if they've mm -hmm. never done it before. Uh, there are a couple of adventures that were kind of designed with. Uh, people who were brand new, uh, Rise of the Tyrant was originally going to be a quick start adventure for Mutants and Masterminds and introduces the concepts behind it one step at a time. So if you mm -hmm. grab the basic hero's handbook or some of the hero archetypes in uh, the deluxe hero's handbook and Rise of the Tyrant, that's kind of a basic introduction to the game that you can run through with your your nieces and nephews or your aunts mm -hmm. and uncles, your your 
superhero loving grandmother who is probably <laughs> awesome right and you don't have to do a lot in the way of an introductory game as far as getting into a hugely in-depth plot mm -hmm. you know one of the great things about superhero games is that especially if you're you're introducing kids to it for the first time is okay. you can simply set them up with the premise of okay you're all superheroes here are the villains let's fight <laughs> You know, and chances are you'll be good to go. Oh, I love that because kids are always like, I don't care what it says on my character sheet. Can I throw a duck at him? Right? <laughs> and the answer to that is almost always yes. A Absolutely. hard yes the on duck. that one. I mean, we all know that a goose is going to do way more damage than a car. Well, you know, they, they're going to learn those things, you know, as far as optimization, ducks versus geese. And <laughs> exactly. That's mastery. That is, yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, I want to say hello to uh, Vic Stir. Uh, we just, uh, you know, Malcolm was on a panel uh, this weekend mm -hmm. and uh, did a great job. Was a lot of fun. Uh, I love listening to Malcolm just kind of talk about the arts and the craft of designing and development. But I want to thank Vic Stir for all the support there. Um, we dropped our uh, link to the Drive Through RPG uh, Rise of the Tyrant. Uh, and, uh, you know, and I, what I like about the name of The Rise of the Tyrant is that it's not loaded at all. And so it's perfectly safe for your Thanksgiving fun. <laughs> right? You end up fighting a bright orange villain who oh. uh, works with a bunch of dinosaurs. Hmm. Hmm. Coincidence? Hmm. Maybe. Hmm. hmm. Feels familiar somehow. Um, Some themes are just universal. Hey, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, hey, when was that created? When was that... Uh, <laughs> Oh, God, the original adventure was written in, I want to say 2017, 2018. Yeah. And it's, yeah, the, the quick start itself just kept getting pushed back and pushed back. And eventually we're just like, I'm, I'm just going to break this down for parts for the uh, <laughs> Astonishing Adventures line. So that it gets published eventually. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, uh, Alex says, a goose is good. Uh, a goose is a good power attack descriptor. Mm -hmm. Like, as oh, in, good for the goose. That's true. Give it a gander, right? Is that what they say? <sighs> no? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so what are some other things when we're looking at sort of uh, creating a space where people can feel comfortable? You know, that first sort of, you're talking about younger cousins and, you know, mm -hmm. they're throwing the ducks around and then you're. <laughs> sort of disaffected middle school age, you know, cousin is like, whatever, but enjoying every last minute of it. Like, how do you, how do you manage all that stuff? I mean, a lot of it is, you know, uh, a lot of getting people excited when they're brand new and a little nervous is never make them feel bad for not knowing the rules and don't mm -hmm. punish them for making wrong choices mm -hmm. and just really be familiar with the old GM art of saying yes and, mm -hmm. or the old improv Absolutely. art. So if somebody says, uh, can my ice villain throw a car at him or like knock the street lamp onto him? Like mm -hmm. the answer is yes. And here's how you do that. Or yes, roll a D20. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. the whole, the real wonder of mutants and masterminds is uh, roll a D20 and add your power level. And that'll accomplish just about anything you want it to. Absolutely. And uh, that's, that's the best thing when you're introducing the game to somebody new you know, the only thing you have to teach them from the get-go is this is the die, you roll it, you add a number to it, you compare it to another number, and that determines how well you go. And just once you've told them that, start playing. Yeah. And they can pick up everything else as you go, <laughs> because it's just a matter of, okay, what number do I use now? Okay, well, you want to add your strength to that. Uh, our yeah, friend yeah. Apook just popped in. Say, hey, uh, how do you do, Apook? Um, Hello. Nice. Okay, sorry, I interrupted you, Crystal. No, you interrupted Steve. Oh, Ooh, no worries. That's a way bigger crime. <laughs> <laughs> it's really Steve's got pedigree. It's really lame when I realize that kind of like central to my core job function is to interrupt people. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> That's awful. True. Uh, oh, Alex brings up something. It's weird that there's a turtle in that adventure uh, in The Rise of the Tyrant uh, named Mahich Mackinall. Maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong. Me, Mich McConnell. Mich McConnell. 
Mitch oh, McConnell. Oh, it's a political joke. <laughs> yeah, that's up, buddy. I was like, there's mm -hmm. no turtle in that there's adventure. There's no turtle in that adventure. <laughs> yeah, no, there's a hedgehog in the rise of cats or the reign of cats and dogs. Well, sure. I mean, her name is Alice, and she just wants to help. Mm -hmm. I like also Alice. A super fun starter adventure, by the way. Uh, yes, if you if you want a fun adventure to play with your like nieces and nephews, totally go for uh, the Reign of Cats and Dogs because it is it is just tongue in cheek cuteness and saving animals. Right. And later you fight a gorilla who is also slime. Uh, let, who's who's also slime? You yes. Said. Wow. And a kangaroo mm -hmm. who can put you in her pouch. <laughs> <laughs> I want that. You want a pouch? Uh, oh, I don't know if I maybe. want a, a pouch. Maybe I do want a pouch. Like it just is. Okay, now we're back to flesh shaping again. Like, yeah. I don't really want to. complains about flesh shaping, you should <laughs> bring it up a lot. <laughs> that is true. That is true. You know, the, uh, the, uh, uh, I, what do they say? Uh, me thinks I do adopt protest too much. Um, mm -hmm. Let's yep. see. Um, oh, and of course, if you want a holiday themed, you know, adventure. <laughs> For suitable for Thanksgiving to introduce your players, you can always just grab the supervillain Doc Holiday mm -hmm. out of uh, the um, Rose oh. Gallery. Uh, no, he's in Freedom he, City Third he's Edition. In Freedom City, that's right. He got upgraded. In fact, I'm pretty sure he comes with a little mini power set specifically for Thanksgiving. For Thanksgiving. Yes. Oh. oh, now I got to look it up. I got to look it and up. You can, and you can just have, you know, Doc Holiday versus the Freedom City Thanksgiving Day Parade uh, with the heroes on a float and hilarity will ensue. We've got oh, some. Oh, it, uh... it turns into an ambulatory corpse combining the features of a pilgrim and a turkey. <laughs> Whoa. Gobble He's got a, a gobble. Wonderbus attack, enhanced strength, and wings. <laughs> But are they delicious wings? You I know, mean, I have not. a. It sounds like they've been left out. So yeah, probably not. Again, gravy would be the the saving thing there. All right, My here we go, Steve. What minions would you give Doc Holiday for a Thanksgiving Day adventure, and what's his plot? Mm. Free well, adventure for everybody, <gasps> right? So I would. You see, I would have tended to go, and you know, the undead turkey thing is is pretty clever, mm -hmm. but. I would have tended to go with something more like giant Thanksgiving Day balloon mecha, you know, mm, or something yeah. of that sort. Luckily, you know. we have the animated balloon stat block in. Uh, we do. In Danger Zone's parade route. Right. Actually, parade route would combine really well with this concept. Yeah. Uh, you know, there for you a Thanksgiving Ooh. Day parade event. Um, so Doc Holiday attacks the Thanksgiving Day parade, mm -hmm. brings the brings the balloons to life. Right? Minions, you know, dressed as pilgrims. Oh, yeah. You know, with, you know, you know, sort of, you know, blaster, you know, uh, blunderbuss, you know, muskets. Yeah, blunder blasters. Blunder blasters. Wonder blaster buses. Blounders. I'm not sure. We'll blaster blasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, we've got some good comments in here, uh, but I do want to say amazing list. Of stuff, and I was just uh, frantically searching and, and dropping links to Drive Through RPG and the <laughs> Rodent Store. But um, some advice from well, some of our, you know, tried and true uh, GMs out there. Apu says mm. the three magic rules for GMs, according to Apu: make sure everybody at the table feels heard, make sure mm -hmm. everybody feels safe to be heard, and that's an important distinction. And yeah. then uh, mm -hmm. number number three: make sure everyone is having fun, including you. Those are great rules. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming to my a poop talk. Um, let's see. <laughs> yeah. um, let's go. see, Sean. I would add to your adventure Ooh, yeah. a giant genetically engineered turkey and just steal the stats for a T-Rex. There you go. Done and done. That is... Recognizing that, you know, birds are basically just little dinosaurs anyway. So. Mm. And they have not forgiven us. Mm-mm. Oh wow! So Alex says I was in Thanks Killing, the musical, <laughs> and Doc Holiday okay. sounds wilder than that. I do hope there's some digital sort of, uh, you know, archival footage uh, that we could check out at some point, Alex. Um, mm -hmm. 
I'm a pretty good so internet now sleuth. It's the, gravy, it's, it's the gravy story and thanks killing the musical next Monday. Yeah, wow. That's a that's an action packed Mutant Mastermind Monday. Um, <laughs> it's going to be a real gravy train. Yes, and Sean's mm -hmm. giving us some. Uh, -da 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 -da. Sean is giving us some um, uh, uh, Hamlet references. Yes, indeed. Uh, as a you know, as a theater nerd growing up, I did my fair share of Shakespeare or whatever we were calling Shakespeare. Um, you did a uh, lot of Midsummer Nights. But. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, let's see. Uh, Apuk says turkeys bent on revenge for the wanton genocide. Mm. Yeah, yeah, they're angry. Yes. They're like, oh, grab the uh, grab the cosmic handbook. And <gasps> use the stats for xenomorphs to go for uh, invading space turkeys. Right. And I love it. I love it. Uh, I am in love with it. I'm going to marry it. Um, Sean mm. says, "Is it just me, or does this turkey taste funny?" <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, what is so, uh, speaking? Yeah. Speaking of cosmic handbook and adventures. Oh, we were going to yeah. tell folks Good uh, about the next upcoming <laughs> Astonishing Adventure. Ooh. Yes. So the next Astonishing Adventure, written by uh, veteran adventure writer Larry Wilhelm, that you might recognize from all his work on Pathfinder and D&D, &D, uh, is called Prodigal Son, uh, spelled S-U-N. We've been promising it for a while. It is our first cosmic level adventure for uh, mm -hmm. the Astonishing Adventures line. So PL-12. And the, the heroes are going to fly into a remote star system to investigate why the sun has suddenly shifted from being yellow to being bright red. Oh, mm. that's not ominous at all. No. <clears throat> that's why you're going there as a, a gentle sort of casual science team rather than, you know, marauding mm -hmm. space heroes with uh, uh, weapons and mm -hmm. superpowers. Right. And anthropomorphic friends with large weapons and guns and a giant Talking turkey oh. <laughs> and a giant turkey <laughs> um, but yeah it's it's a higher level adventure you get to brawl with some some fairly big name characters in the freedom cosmos mm. uh, yeah it should be a good time i don't want to give away oh. too much because it's got a lot of twists <clears throat> and turns to it right. uh, a lot of aliens too as i recall yeah we used a couple of different aliens from the from the Cosmic Handbook, so you've got the the Hassan, the like serpent people, and uh, uh, the uh, Hexum, the, the, the Octopoids. Yep. Uh, lore, of course, because it's in space. Mm -hmm. Gotta have lore. Right. Didn't work in any Gru. No, it's probably, well, not that anyone knows of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's tricky. I love it. Uh, <laughs> Let me see. All right, folks, if you are just joining us, we've got quite a crowd because, you know, we're – at least I believe we are. I don't – I can't verify it at this moment, but we're broadcasting both on YouTube and on uh, Facebook Live. And then next week we'll add Twitch, and it will be like amazing. That. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you've got questions, um, you are uh, catching Mutants and Masterminds Monday. I want to uh, welcome folks who are just catching us for the first time. I, I did, Sean, I think I ignored one of your questions accidentally, um, but I believe you, you have a, um, it's sort of a, a script uh, that I appreciate, which is the script that is, what has Troy forgotten to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, prompt. Can we get that script? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly, right? Uh, could I get that script, please? <laughs> I do get it on Mutants <laughs> Masterminds Monday, and I do appreciate that. Um, but, um, you know, we've got some data and things that we're kind of working on getting out there. Uh, it's a matter of triage. Now, to be fair, it was mm. sort of promised as an as we can do, um, but we will do that, I promise you. So don't, don't get too... Uh, um, uh, Disheartened by the delay, Apuk says no one expects the Gruish Inquisition. Mm hmm. True that. True. True that. Um, yeah, uh, do we have. So I shared some links to the Cosmic Handbook uh, over to on the Drive Through RPG site. And my understanding is that, and I'll, I'll share the links to the Green Ronin store next, but, um, but this. Is there. I mean, I don't know if we can talk about this. Uh, is there some kind of a secret. Thing happening with well hmm, I wonder 
I wonder if people pay attention, they might find out there is some kind of secret thing and then crack the code and maybe, mm -hmm. maybe get a discount on something. I don't know. I'm not here to, you know, spill the beans. Are you You're definitely confusing about? us. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know it's working when you confuse the people who work on the stuff. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, this is my funny way of saying pay attention because there may be some codes baked into the stuff that will get you, you know, something nice, uh, a discount that you could potentially use for your Christmas and holiday and uh, just mm -hmm. joyful shopping for yourself or others. Uh, Absolutely. has all the magic in the chat. And Apparently. The <laughs> disembodied presence. That's right. That's right. Uh, but even with the disembodied presence, I cannot focus on more than three things, and I'm at five right now, so forgive me if I... <laughs> You're like, what is he talking about? <laughs> I want to be a disembodied presence capable of focusing on more than one thing. I know, right? <laughs> it's not all it's cracked up to be. Basically, I'm just a vaporous cloud. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but the real question is, can you just upload yourself into Animal Crossing? <laughs> I keep trying. It's not working. I have a mm. lot of bells. Like I'm, yeah. I'm done with this. I just want to go live on my island with I... the Nooks and Isabel and Opal. I just want to do some deep sea diving and some fishing and some collecting of mm. all the different fruits and I want to collect mushrooms and oh. have them look charming instead of kind of scary. <gasps> Yeah, that yeah, that I do love. Yeah, lots of love people that. are doing Thanksgiving get-togethers on Animal Crossing this week. Oh, that's charming. Right? I hope for few. I hope so. <laughs> my parents don't play video games, so. Mm, I really tried to get my mom, uh, my mom to play. I I got her a, an Xbox so that we could get on, you know, kind of play. We played um, we played a zombie game. My mother likes horror stuff. But she's she's not very good at aiming, and so she just kind of spent the whole time just staring at the ceiling and running around, you know, uh, <laughs> oh, dying a lot. Well, it and takes, yeah, if you didn't grow up with those controls, it really takes a while to get used to. There was it sure, a, does. sure does like a phase, like from my late teens through my early twenties, where I just didn't have any video game systems, and that was the stage where we shifted from two D games to three D games. Absolutely. And, hmm, I've never quite caught up. I cannot do shooters. I understand in principle how they work, but mm -hmm. like coordinating both my thumbs and my trigger fingers to do different things. What? Yeah, yeah it's a lot of reflex training, mm -hmm. and it's also a lot to train your mind to not be nauseated by the yeah. you know when your mm, kind of inner ear too. thing, um, and to not panic, which is you know something I still struggle with. I'll tell you the 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 more immersive game experience, uh, like a virtual reality and that kind of stuff. Worked on a virtual reality re reality title for about two three years, um, about four or five decades ago. And uh, <laughs> wow, it can. I mean, I pushed through it because it was so kind of exciting and playing was just you know mm -hmm. awful. But it definitely takes me back to learning how to play Quake and being just utterly nauseated just so sick mm -hmm. to my stomach all the time um yeah we're still dominated brawlers heck yeah Pretty girls i cleared in what six hours nice nice do you yeah. do you do well in uh competitive brawl brawlers like i i haven't in a long time i played a little bit in local tournaments when i was in high school yeah like street fighter and primal rage if anyone remembers that and mm. x-men children of the atom <laughs> Yeah, I love Just to it. Tell you how old I am. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and, you know my my you know high school you know video games were you know much much closer to you know Space Invaders and Asteroids. So yeah, what mine Which was is infuriating because you look younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's you the truth. My son, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> and you are my son, Steve. Um, like you know, in the sky. Uh, mm -hmm. But I wanted to say, um, Zork. Is that a thing? What was yeah. the game that you played? It was with a thing. I don't know yeah. if it is a thing. I, no, it was yeah. Was by a Gru? <laughs> <laughs> Way back in my, that's kind of my, you know, growing up uh, uh, in school games. Uh, that and, mm -hmm. you know, Oregon Trail, of course. Uh, yep. It was actually the Oregon Trail. We were literally in a covered wagon. That's where I went to school. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, you didn't die of dysentery. No, I did not. Um, or did. That's why I'm disembodied. Sean says, I have not thought about Primal Rage in forever. Well, we're here to, <laughs> for those deep cuts, my friends. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely, we are. 
yeah, so um, what else do we have cooking on the agenda today? Uh, other questions, folks, from the audience? May drop your uh, – Drop your chat questions. I, I'm certain there's one I'm waiting for that I haven't heard yet. Hello, Jacob Blackmon. Zork was mm -hmm. a thing. <laughs> Says Jacob. Very nice. Uh, oh, also shout out to Jacob for that bearded baby Owen image. Oh right. Oh, that was adorable. It's so we need to share a link to that. We'll share the image itself. Yeah. No. Uh, Owen said that there was a polished up image of that, and uh, I think we're gonna license it for you know I I need a t-shirt. With that on yeah, there, yes, frankly, absolutely. Yeah, Owen I mean, Casey your... Stevens, the nicest man in gaming, and now the cutest baby in gaming. The cutest mm -hmm. baby with a beard. Uh, right. You've got your Thursday, you know, mascot right there. One hundred percent. That was just such a great thing. And, and Jacob, you are a true talent and a good uh, uh, participant, and it was fun to see that. So looking forward. You to... remember the the eighties <laughs> babyfication fad that went yes. through the animation of like the yes. the, the Muppet Chibi babies, Muppet and Flintstone babies. kids, and Tom and Jerry kids, and yep. The, and we need to start that with Tiny game Toons designers. Adventures. Tiny Toon, yeah. yeah. We're gonna we're gonna start doing that with uh, game designers. So uh, we're gonna have uh, Chris Premus next week, and you know, I, uh, I don't, I don't want to put any pressure on any artists that may be sort of paying attention to what's going on. But if we were to see some kind of babification, I mean, not that not that we aren't already babes, you know, in that sort mm -hmm. of hot babe kind of way but um you know i mean i'm just saying maybe we might license those two um you know who knows i i'm not this is in no way a contract or a commitment but we will hurry up um let's I wonder if we could tie this into a an aged supplement well, yeah. like reverse I mean, age, age related. reverse yeah, age age related age. <laughs> age. No, we can't call it age play. that's bad Oh, no, no, <laughs> no, that's, that's not going to come up well in the Google search. No, that will not be optimized at all. No, we'll leave that off of our SEO stuff for sure. Um, uh, Jacob says that Muppet Babies was uh, his favorite show. I did not care for it. I thought it was crap. I loved Muppet Babies mm -hmm. and I've watched the new reboot and it's actually pretty clever and cute. I'll have to check it out. I just always – I don't know. It just creeped me out for sure. Um, oh, Steve, uh, Jonesy has a really good one. Freedom City Little League. <gasps> yes. Freedom oh, City. A... That is amazing. We've got to steal that for something. We, I did an adventure for that once way back when. I've got to dig up my copy of that Oh, somewhere. where they get de-aged into, like, <laughs> where toddlers. And... Turns the Freedom League into toddlers, and <gasps> then the heroes have to corral them. Oh, that sounds that sounds like the same plot as Raid of Cats and Dogs. A poop yeah, kinda in some ways. A yeah, poops. you're trying to not hurt things with superpowers. Pretty much. Uh, I, I'm dying. Uh, a poop says under age. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's easy. Yeah. That just no, it just that has something a, else I don't want appearing in the Google don't, search. No, right, yeah, no. it just doesn't seem. You know, yeah, maybe. no, there are already terrible things that come up when you Google Crystal Frazier underage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm choking <laughs> on laughter. Oh, I just, you're oh, making, joy. I am, I'm, you know, I, I, with my disembodied, you know, being disembodied, I still find a way to uh, laugh so hard I choke and I'm also crying, so I can't read the screen. But Sean says, I believe that Sean says, as I look without my glasses, says, uh, uh, and filled with tears, um, uh, <laughs> someone asked a bit ago on the Reddit thread, are there any plans to collect the Nether War adventures like with Emerald City Knights? There's been some talk about it. Nothing's quite come up. It's something we pitched mm. as an idea, and yeah, I think there's so much going on that that we're not 100% sure where we are with like commitment. Uh, yeah. If we I do, it'll be a thing where we roll. Oh, sorry, Steve. Well, I was going to say, I think that, you know, the, the most likely thing to happen initially would be for them to be offered as a bundle of some sort, mm -hmm. uh, okay. you know, but then there's the whole process of compiling them all into a single product, and that's a little bit <coughs> of work. Yeah, and that'll take a little bit of layout work, because the mm -hmm. the adventures are laid out to accommodate your home printer, so they're, they're laid out at 8.5 by 11, which is different than the book print sizes we go with. Right. So all the adventures will have to be laid out again, and get a second proofing pass at least. And we'd probably want to add some new material so we're not just reselling you the same thing again. So we'd probably add 
you know, an extra villain or two or mm -hmm. some extra player facing material about like becoming master mage or maybe a map for the sanctum Sanct or the, the Nerean nexus mm -hmm. or. Yeah. Yeah. So Sean brought yeah. up uh, a, a good um, uh, question, a query, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. Is there, or, you know, is there any chance for input? I know that uh, it sounds like somebody in the Reddit thread potentially or in, in the subreddit said uh, uh, Great Crusader posted notes uh, for the Nerean Nexus with no guarantee that the notes will jive with the plan. We certainly uh, – you know, send a note to Let's Play at greenronin.com and send it over, and we will incorporate that into a discussion. Um, you know, uh, again, no guarantees that that – you know, given all the things that we look at from, you know, behind the scenes that we don't want to burden – community with but uh, but sounds nice to kind of hear some thoughts hmm. let's see here a couple other things um okay so uh <laughs> the the comments on i think we really do need to explore um this vivification uh, uh process but <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh this is so good um let's see yeah and sean has got all kinds of sharing all kinds of stuff here let's see um a Freedom City Mojo homage. A Mojo in quotes. Is that a... Uh, we've yeah. got one already. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, we've already got one. Uh, we've got in Rogue's Gallery an alien AI called Toon, whose entire shtick is creating competitive programming for the hyper-intelligent, super-evolved, lazy aliens that live in a Dyson sphere nearby. That uh, yeah, the Dyson sphere stuff. That's like um, mm -hmm. uh, what they use to vacuum and stuff, right? Is that like a, yes, yeah, yes. it's exactly yeah. like that. That's that's right. They live inside of a, a fancy a giant vacuum. European vacuum cleaner. <laughs> I like it one that's way too expensive <laughs> to have ever been able to enjoy. Um, I love it. Um, all right. Well, so w what else do we? Oh, thank you, Sean, for the uh, for the updates. Um, we'll get that you know ronin army data out there so we can unpack some of that stuff and revisit some ideas that were shared you know some time mm -hmm. ago mm -hmm. uh, i loved the ronin army boards yeah, yeah. super useful well mm -hmm. i'm tell I'll, I'll let you know in on a little secret just you two though um don't tell everybody uh we are uh we're looking at what we can do that sort of has that same sort of utility as a mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. You know, place for a community to meet, but is a little different, and you know, so it, it's a little more modern than the ancient uh, <laughs> setup that we were having with the bolts and um, our ancient PHP based. Form. Oh dear, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but we've got a couple good options in the running, and we might even uh, ask for some testers to sort of give it a mm. couple things. It's gonna bring everybody into the company Slack channel. <laughs> that's a good idea that's a great just open the door just anybody mm -hmm. come on in i love it <laughs> love 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 it come um, on in give us feedback on the development process right oh yeah yeah Here's yeah proofreading just just a wall of words <laughs> just just yeah just whatever it is that's on your mind um yeah. you know and then I'll, let's get into talking people, politics people would have a great time the company slack channel is tons and tons of Hey, where's this thing? <laughs> Where did you put this file I need? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Am I using the right version of this file? Um, <laughs> yes. How about this? Where is that? <laughs> right. Exactly. I love and it. I think we all know where it is. <laughs> it's with Hal. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, Hal. Hey, like a sort of a, a, a dragon sitting atop a pile of treasure. <laughs> yes. It's Indeed. Hal sitting atop a pile of PSD files. <laughs> yep. He has another his other digital sort of, hoard. His digital hoard. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, Hal, we love you. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, um, Alex Thomas says, only do that if there's a channel for when is Mass Effect coming out. <laughs> we have a macro for that in yeah. in the uh, company Slack. Actually, well, it has now been zero days since somebody proposed licensing Mass, Mass Effect. Effect. Thanks, Alex. <laughs> Great, we, we had a good run. Reset the counter. We do, oh. too. we do. Um, but, ironically, it's also been zero days since the last Velociraptor attack, but that's on me. Mm -hmm. It's true. Safety uh, first. Yeah, safety third. <laughs> I don't know what would be first or second. 
I guess Velociraptors would be well, Mass Effect. Yeah. Mass, Mass Effect, Effect, Effect and yeah. feeding the Velociraptors, which again, sorry. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> well, we're so busy. We just don't know. Yeah, there's a True. lot going on right now. It really is. That <laughs> really is. Um, okay. I get it all done in three days this week instead of five. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to feed the beast, the Velociraptor. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Velociraptor. Yeah. Sorry, I, I am in such a mood. Go on. True facts. Corgis are basically Velociraptors for the first two and a half years. Right. <laughs> Horizontal ones. Yeah, just very flat Velociraptors. <laughs> Velociflatters. They kind of make the same noises, like. Ah, ah. Um. Okay. So this is the. I will. I will admit to maybe having passed over this particular question a couple times, not on purpose, um, but I can't mm -hmm. avoid it. Many people have asked <laughs> multiple times in the last thirty seconds. Wait, wait, wait. Let me guess. No, oh. but that's so close. Uh, that's a bonus um, that will. Uh, but they wanted mm -hmm. Vigilante's <laughs> Handbook. I was just gonna say Vigilante's Handbook is back in writing. Uh, so we've got most of the text in. I am fleshing out the new setting for it, which is, of course, Faroburg, the city, and sort of giving background on the city and describing the unique villains who live there. Uh, the, the big kingpin-style criminal is going to be the Rat Queen, who we detailed a little bit in the... Uh, where's the Super mm, Team handbook? Super Team? It's somewhere up here in my collection of books. Just but, to the right a little, yeah. um, and then right there, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so we're we're going to detail her and some of her agents, but also a bunch of the like Batman-style colorful rogues who live in the city and mm -hmm. and make everybody's life heck. <laughs> oh, uh, heck! And it's it's not going to be as detailed as Freedom City or Emerald City. There's going to be a lot more room for you to get in and like add your own NPCs and businesses and things like that. But hopefully there's going to be enough there that you can really bite into it and use it as a campaign setting right out of the book. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, Alex says, uh, ah, in reference to the Velociraptor issue. So that's where all of the interns at Green Ronin keep going. Um, that's true. It, interns at Green Ronin stands for internal. <laughs> they're <laughs> they're eaten by the Velociraptor. Um, I mean, it's in it's in the job application. Must I, be able to work. Uh, must be able to lift forty pounds and must be able to work from within the digestive tract of an extinct reptile. Right. We say, how chewy are you? <laughs> right. Yeah. On a scale of one to five. Um, uh, so yeah, do we want to talk about Time Traveler's Codex? What's uh, not really. None of us know where it is in the delivery process. We know it, it's right. It's here in, like, on the continent. It's landed, in yeah. The United States. Yeah, yeah. It's working its way through the delivery process. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it is indeed. Um, and then did we get? I thought that maybe I'm, uh, maybe I'm, you know, huffing microphone here. But did we? I don't even know what that means. Uh, <laughs> I strike that from the record. Uh, what did? Uh, what about um, the? Uh, Oh, shucks. The cards. Um, oh, the condition, condition cards? cards. Yes. We've, we have been assured they will be available in time for your uh, Christmas shopping. <gasps> like yes, it. So. Love yes. it. And we have a very stealthy thief who is liberating them from the pile of digital treasures on which the great dragon of production rests. Mm -hmm. I like it. Um, is that little burglar? Thief? I guess it should be a burglar. Yeah, a burglar. burglar. He's burgling. Uh, are, are we talking? Is that is that uh, uh, burglar named Will by chance? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering. I'm not well, saying that, that <laughs> offers me an opportunity to compare Will to a Hobbit. And... <laughs> oh, you have gotten me in so much trouble, Mister Kenson. How <laughs> dare you? How very dare. Um, Will, you know that it was Steve, not me. No. <laughs> <laughs> um uh hey here's a good question uh sentinels of the freedom burst isn't it sentinels of earth prime sentinels of earth prime yeah what's uh do we have an update on that uh we do i don't we do yeah How much do we share i don't know um <laughs> premise yell at me <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Not you. Uh, me. I'll be all that. But I, you know, I well, can... because Troy, who outranks me in the company, ordered me to. 
<laughs> uh, Sentinels of Earth Prime is getting packaged up and ready for print now. Nice. So That's been safe. Quite the it quite is. the expedition. Finishing up in production after mm -hmm. multiple monsoons striking our art studio and yeah, I think I think we had this project has survived like multiple computer failures and mm -hmm. now a plague and at least one artist vanishing off the face of the earth and by yeah yes. by hook or by crook. Um, so I yeah. I mm -hmm. think it's still I think. The cards are still in proofing, which is basically a final edit pass. And yep. then, of course, uh, for those of you who don't know how printing works, we are going to send the files to our printers, and they will make up a test batch and ship them back to us without like the fancy box and all of that. Mm -hmm. And we'll go through those, make sure all the files are printing accurately, that there aren't any obvious mistakes. And then we ideally will send like the printer of the word that these are great go ahead and run with it yep or, love or, it yeah even closer to done than before yes that Looking is forward a, to playing that yeah me, i know me too me too um uh, oh hey jay gray link wizard you know uh jay gray has had um you know, it's the holiday season, and we're all doing the thing and trying to get ready for the stuff. <laughs> um, and so Jay's going to be busy over the course of the next uh, couple weeks. But um, glad that you're able to stop by, Jay. And you know, mm -hmm. when you're not here, you're here with us in our hearts. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And oh. In our link boxes. Yeah. yeah in our in, in our lack of good links. Um, that's on me. Um, but uh, Sean says, uh, hey, seeing as how you're talking about the Time Traveler's Codex, how about this for news? I didn't know this, and thank you very much. A little tangent, as we do uh, uh, once in a while. Mm -hmm. Captain, once every five minutes. Captain Jack says, uh, or, uh, Captain Jack Harkness will return to Doctor Who for the Christmas special. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so such is the word, but we'll see. I can't tell yeah. if Crystal's excited or, or slightly nauseated or... More no, than... his actor is not been kind to my people, so oh. the character is kind of dead to me. I did not know that, and I really appreciate that, you know, being clued in and, and um, you know, the one of the things that this whole time period has taught me is that all you have to do to remedy many of the sort of injustices is listen. Is just listen. Yeah, it's... It's it frustrating is. too because like I love the I love how he delivers and I love the character concept and all of that. Mm -hmm. And it'd be so easy for him to not be a jerk. Like all he has to do right. is admit, like, hey, this is not my lived experience. I don't know these things firsthand. I'm not necessarily super comfortable, but that's on me as an individual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like maybe, most minority yeah. communities just want you to not spread lies about us. <laughs> Right. absolutely absolutely uh. yeah and uh yeah i mean that i am um i'm one of those people that i'm not able to actually reconcile uh the artist and the art you know when the you know and that's just that's just yeah. me um it's, death of the author is a lot easier when the author is actually dead <laughs> yes that's true <laughs> right yeah yeah um that is very true uh, like I'm, I'm a lot more forgiving with say Tolkien or Lovecraft because they're not alive, using their fame and and mm -hmm. fortune to right. still push this agenda. <gasps> yeah, they don't have a platform anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is why I love that we use our platform to talk about diversity, equity, inclusion, and we mm -hmm. uh, aren't afraid. Yeah, we really are, and it, it's I mean, a I yeah. I'm the first to admit I was raised kind of racist, and I've been trying to get better about that. So I am mm -hmm. going to screw up, and I hope people call me out. And I really hope I have the grace to say I was wrong and not double down and be a dick. And that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. And it is something that uh, that we all need to work on as uh, you know, we do white as people beings. and as human beings. And absolutely. <laughs> um, absolutely. So I have to say... Um, I love that we're able to do the work and do our work and incorporate the things that we learn about what communities need to feel supported. Um, we've got mm -hmm. some great things coming up um, in that regard, and 
not the least of which are some you know additional streams that are coming. We've got um, you know a holiday extravaganza coming as well, um, and we will continue to have fun and stream and mess up and atone and make it right. Uh, and we look forward to hearing from folks. Yeah, go. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, so with that being said, it is oh, holy smokes, three oh six, and I'm like, oh, we, uh, now the next topic is oh, the next topic <laughs> is farewell. Um, mm -hmm. Crystal, Steve, always, truly, always a delight to spend uh, a little slice of a Monday with you. Um, looking, you know, forward into the week, I know that we've got um, there will be no Thursdays because we'll be celebrating um, the attack of the, you know, uh, Titan Turkey. Mm -hmm. Or the Turkey Titan, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but uh, but then we'll be back. Um, we'll have uh, some other things to share. We'll be sharing something as well specific to a uh, sale uh, that you don't know about yet. But also check out our Wolf and Moon sale. Um, that's uh, a, a link that we've posted in the chat, and we'll share that in the news as well. Uh, any words for um hey, here we go yeah um uh, check our pinned comment for that link uh but yeah any final words before we uh head off to uh the turkey um yeah uh try to enjoy your week especially the holiday mm -hmm. uh if you have issues with your family and this is a difficult time of year i'm sorry and i hope you have good community you can reach out to know that you are loved and important to many people besides whoever might be making your life difficult mm -hmm. so and if you're if you're not native try to use this time of year as a reminder to reach out and learn a little bit about native struggles or uh how you can help give back to communities who are impacted by you living on their ancestors land mm -hmm. yeah and, you know just this time of year more than ever just be kind to yeah. people you know it's it's challenging especially this year for a lot of folks yeah and, it's, and so just be mindful of that and i mean the days are getting longer it's getting darker it's mm -hmm. go easy on yourself it's going to be a rough couple of months probably absolutely uh wear that mask mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's a good yep. one thank you uh jonesy for that reminder and yes uh, with that i say adieu Happy Thanksgiving to you both. Happy Wolf and Newt Day. Um, and we will see you by next week, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Take okay. Care, Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.